Now, in addition to the two vaccines that we've already authorized, there are two further vaccines in the pipeline, one from AstraZeneca and one from Janssen. And these are both uh, viral vector-based vaccines and they're currently under active review. We've just received a conditional marketing authorization application for the AstraZeneca vaccine this week. Um, I think it was Tuesday, and we're hoping that we can conclude the evaluation by the end of the January. The Janssen vaccine is a little bit further behind and it's under the rolling review process. I can also tell you that more than 45 other vaccine developers have been in contact with us and that many other many therapeutics are also in the pipeline and some of these are likely to come to EMA for authorization later during the year. While we have taken every step to expedite our evaluation processes, I want to repeat that we have applied the same robust evaluation standards as for any vaccine and ensuring vaccine safety has been our number one priority. We're keenly aware of the huge responsibility we have to get these recommendations right to protect European citizens. Our work doesn't stop, stop at authorization of the vaccine or medicine. We continue to collect and analyze data to ensure that the use of the vaccine is always based on the most up-to-date evidence. The authorization provides for an agreed plan that includes specific and legally binding obligations on the companies to, to ensure that additional data continues to be generated and submitted after approval and in accordance with predefined deadlines. The safety and effectiveness of these vaccines will continue to be very closely monitored through the EU pharmacovigilance system as vaccines are rolled out across the member states and also globally. And in addition to the normal requirements that any vaccine or medicine would have to ensure that all side effects are reported to our pharmacovigilance system, eudovigilance, and to continue continually monitor on a national, regional and global basis, companies exceptionally have to provide EMA with additional monthly safety updates and conduct specific studies to monitor safety and effectiveness. We're now at the start of vaccination campaigns that will see millions of EU citizens immunized in a very short time. And we're leveraging all data sources to achieve nearly real-time safety monitoring of the vaccines. We're taking steps to ensure that we can leverage real-world data from clinical practice to monitor the safety and effectiveness and what's also new is that in addition to the requirements that we put on the companies, independent European studies on safety and effectiveness will be con conducted um, under the supervision of the European Medicines Agency and also the European Centre for Disease Controls. Back in May 2020, we already set up a project to establish harmonized tools to conduct specific pharmacoepi studies on COVID-19 vaccines. And at the very end of last year, we commissioned the first safety monitoring study in population groups prioritized for vac vaccination in at least five member states. And this will run between February and December 2021. Later in the year, we're planning to launch a much larger prospective safety study, which will be building on the outputs of the previous project and will span over two years in many more member states with a focus on healthcare personnel and risk groups that have not yet been included in the pre-authorization trials. We're also closely collaborating with the ECDC, who is leading on coordinating studies to monitor effectiveness. We are constantly reviewing our recommendations to ensure that the vaccines are used according to the mo most up-to-date scientific information. One example I can give you is that on the basis of additional studies, we recommended updating the, the product information for Comirnaty to clarify that six doses of the vaccine can be safely extracted from each file, provided that appropriate syringes and needles are used. This as you, this will help to increase the number of citizens who can be vaccinated by the available stocks in member states. 
We're also working with the companies and national authorities to help increase production capacity in new manu manufacturing sites and to facilitate scale up. Throughout this crisis, we medicines regulators have reinforced our bonds with our sister agencies in other regions of the world. As Terence mentioned, I currently chair the International Coalition of Medicines Regulatory Authorities, and under this umbrella, we have led global efforts to streamline regulatory requirements for vaccine development, helping to facilitate both the development and approval processes. We, we've been working closely with other European partners, including the European Commission, the Health Security Committee and the European Centre for Disease Control and with international partners such as the WHO and with many regulators from across the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has prompted us not only to rethink how we work in a crisis, but to ensure that we are relevant, our voice is heard, and more importantly, that our voice is understood. It's brought medicines regulation into the spotlight. As I said at the beginning, many EU citizens did not know that EMA even existed. It's typically, medicines regulation is typically an activity that happens in the shadows. There's a public expectation that the medicines we use are safe, efficacious and of high quality, but most people have very little knowledge about what happens in practice to make sure that this is the case. In the context of this public health crisis, we've suddenly become mainstream and we've moved to the center of intense public debates with some calling for speedier approvals while others are concerned that development was going too fast to ensure safety. Now, this situation certainly presented us with challenges, but it was also an opportunity to make better known the contribution that we play and, and the contribution that we bring to public health and the important regulatory role that we have to take decisions that are based on evidence, facts and science. We keenly recognize that vaccines will only help in the fight against COVID-19 if citizens have enough confidence in our authorizations to get vaccinated. We owe citizens transparency so they can make up our minds about the vaccines based on the evidence that we communicate. So we've had to step up our communication activities. And this has been a great experience for us. We've organized two stakeholder meetings, public stakeholder meetings open to everybody across the world to explain how we are evaluating and monitoring the COVID-19 vaccines and to respond directly to questions and concerns from Euro European citizens. 